When we're building plugin based applications, a lot of the time we're dealing with things like reflection and dependency injection put together. If this is something that you're relatively new to, this can lead to a lot of confusion and troubleshooting and trying to figure out why things aren't working. My name's Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, I want to walk you through a common challenge that people run into when they're trying to mix reflection with dependency injection for trying to load their plugins. I'm gonna walk you through a common setup that happens, where the struggle ends up occurring, and then how we go about fixing this. In this video, I'll be using Autofact, but if you're using a different dependency injection framework, a lot of the concepts will be similar. A quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free weekly newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. Now with that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio. So generally when we're building plugin-based applications, one of the first things that we start doing, especially when we're working with dependency injection, is we try configuring our dependency injection container. And in this case, because I'm using Autofact, it is called the container builder class. And then from there, we can start to register things onto it. Now, in this particular case, what I'm going to be looking at is a setup where our plugins are meeting this iRepository interface. I just have this iRepository interface pulled out into a different project. And technically, if we had other projects for our different plugins, they could go reference this as well. In our particular case, though, we're not going to have to load from different assemblies. I'm just going to keep it all in one to keep this more simple. Before I dive into how we end up using Reflection and the Container Builder together, what I'm going to do is look at the implementation of our plugin. So from line 45 to 50, I have the definition of our plugin. It's very simple. The iRepository interface just has this sort of contrived method on it that's an i enumerable that returns these my object instances. The method is just called get all objects. Now, in this particular case, the challenge that we're going to be working through is when our plugin has dependencies. So what I have on our class here is dependency for our plugin. If we look a little bit above here on line 37, I've just created this really artificial dependency. It also is going to have a similar method that can get all objects, and we're just going to return this dummy object back. This part in particular is not really important. I just wanted to show that when we finally get this working, we'd be able to pull all of that information through from our dependency. The critical part that we want to look at is right here from line 45 to 46. We have a plugin. In. It does meet our plugin interface that's called iRepository, and it does have a dependency. These are the important pieces that we're trying to work with here. So if I scroll back up to where we start using reflection with the container builder, generally what I see people trying to do, and this is pretty common, right? I do this a lot with my own plugin loading, is we do some type of scanning to be able to find which assemblies we want to load from. In this particular case, like I said, we're only going to be working with the current assembly. So I do have some code we'll get to in a little bit later in this video that walks through stepping through files and trying to load in different assemblies. But if we look from line 14 to 15, just the current assembly. From there, what we're going to do is ask for the types in that assembly and only pick the ones that meet our iRepository interface, because that's going to be our plugin interface that we're working with. Now, where the issue ends up arising, I think for most people, is this line 19 here. What people want to be able to do is use Activator Create Instance in order to create an instance of their plugin. From there, what they're able to do is take that instance that was created through Reflection and then register that instance onto the Container Builder. If we go to run this, we'll see that we run into a little challenge. So let's go look at what the rest of this code does first, then we'll try it out. After we've done all of our registration, we build the container, get a lifetime scope, and then all that we're doing is asking for all of the plugins that we found, and we're just gonna print out the type names. It's very simple, and once this program runs, it should exit. And ideally, what we see if this works is we just have our single plugin, the name of that, get printed to the console. If I press F5 to run this, though, we'll see that it's not going to go exactly as planned. And we can see that right away I get an exception. And it says there's a missing method exception that it can't dynamically create an instance of the type our repository plugin. And the reason for that is that there's no parameterless constructor to find. And that makes sense. When we tried to call create instance, we're not passing in any dependencies. So you have a couple of options at this point. If you want to continue using create instance this way off of the activator class, what you could do is make a decision to standardize all of the dependencies that need to go into your plugin. You could say that when I call create instance and pass in the plugin type, you need to have your plugin defined such that it takes in whatever dependencies that you mark is required. In my personal opinion, this is pretty limiting. It's going to mean that anyone who goes to create a plugin can only work with your dependencies. I feel like that's not very extensible because you'll probably have plugins that want to have their own dependencies passed in. Maybe not everyone's going to need the same set of 
things, and that's kind of hard to enforce in a plugin system. Although, that is one option you could work with, I just don't think it's ideal. The other thing that you could do if you're insistent on using Activator Create Instance is think about having a parameterless constructor. So if we check out our plugin implementation here, we did require one parameter passed in on the constructor. This is a default constructor in C-sharp. It just might look a little odd if you're not used to the syntax. What we could do is remove it. We don't have any constructor and we need to provide maybe one that has the parameter and one that doesn't. And then we would have to come up with a creative way to set it. That way, we could call the parameterless constructor using activator create instance up here, and then come up with a different mechanism to set that dependency on our instance. If we assume that we're going down that path then, when would we be able to set the dependencies properly? Where are those dependencies coming from? If they're coming off of the container builder itself, would we need to wait until we've built the container first to be able to start resolving the dependencies and then maybe use something like property or method injection on our plugin? I think that's a potential option, but again, to me, it doesn't really feel right. And ultimately, I think this all boils down to the fact that activator create instance may not be the thing that you want to use here. This is especially true if the plugins that you're trying to create instances of have dependencies that are going to be part of your container already. So to explain that a little bit further, the challenge here is that we're using two different systems to create instances of things. If we're using a dependency injection framework like Autofact, it's going to seemingly magically inject those dependencies for us through the constructor. If we're using Activator Create Instance, there is no magic. It's going to pick the constructor that matches the parameters that you provide. If I don't provide any, it's going to look for a parameterless constructor. And if I do provide parameters, it's going to pick the constructor that matches those. But how do I get those instances of the dependencies that have to go in? Suddenly, I have to kind of finagle my own dependency injection to pass into the plugins. So in my opinion, if we completely ditch this line, we can start to come up with something that's a little bit better. And really, it's pretty simple because Autofac, and there's lots of other dependency injection frameworks that support this kind of thing, has a method that we can use instead that's not register instance, it's just register type. If we pass in the type, plugin type in this case, this will now hook up the type of that plugin into our dependency injection container. Because that's in there, Autofac will now be able to go resolve dependencies that it needs as soon as we go ask for an instance of an I repository. And that means that it's able to look at the constructor to say, what does this class need? And it will be able to support that across all of the different plugins that you provide into here, as long as it has dependencies registered for each of those plugins. We need to make sure that dependency for our plugin is registered. And we can see from line 10 to 12 that we do have it there. So we have our dependency. This is going to allow us to register the type of our plugin. And if you notice, register type here is taking in an explicit type parameter and register type here is not using the generic method. It's using the overload that's taking in an instance of a type object. But that means that we have both pieces registered on the container. So we should be able to go resolve this. Let's try running this now. And there we go. We were able to get rid of activator create instance altogether simplifying our code because now everything's just being registered onto the container. And because our dependency is also registered there with our plugin, it will get automatically resolved through dependency injection for us. So now that you've seen how we can move away from activator create instance and register things properly on the dependency injection container, we could look into doing things like scanning for the other assemblies in the bin directory. So I have plugin one and plugin two also in the bin directory. So what you could do, and I'm not gonna go walk through all the details of this, but I'll show you a dependency scanner that I've implemented. What it's able to do is ask the current directory that we're running out of for all of the DLLs that are there. And you could change this to point at a plugin folder or implement a file filter to go look for specifically named plugins. You could do anything you'd like. Then we use assembly load file, and you could change this up to be more robust to make sure it's not going to throw exceptions and things like that. But from there, what we're able to do is ask the container builder, and this is specific to Autofact this part, but we could ask to register the assembly types, passing in all of those assemblies. From there, we can use assignable to I repository, which is kind of like using a link where clause where we're saying for all of those types, just the ones that implement I repository. 
because that's our plugin interface. And then from there, we're just telling Autofact to make sure that only allow this to be resolved when people ask for the interface and we'll make them singleton implementation. So it's not going to make new instances. So you could absolutely use something like this dependency scanner implementation to go load all of the plugins from the bin directory instead of just using something like assembly get executing assembly. And hopefully that helps identify where you might be running into some common roadblocks using activator create instance. So the reflection part of plugin loading alongside a dependency injection framework. In this particular case, Autofact. But the same type of thing could happen with iService Collection in your ASP.NET Core apps. If you're interested in seeing more about plugin-based applications, you can check out this video next for a Blazor build series. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.